God bless you. Mungu um, um, I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jina la Yesu I am happy to be here. To those that were not here. Kwa wala mbao hawakuwepo hapa siku ya ijuma. And uh, and today we welcome. Na leo tunawakaribisha. And we trust we we'll have a wonderful time. Na tunaamini utakuwa na wakati wa baraka. Once again in the name of the Lord Jesus. Mara nyingine tena katika jina la Bwana Yesu. Uh, some of you are quiet. Maybe are they not hearing me? Baadhi yenu mko kimya nafikiri labda mnisikii ninapoongea. Amen. Amen. That is 20%. Hiyo ni 20%. Uh, amen. Amen. That is 70%. Hiyo ni 70%. Amen. 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 Ah, hapo sawa. Asilimia na kuzidi. Asilimia 100. Where God is, mahali alipo Mungu, there is noise. Kuna kelele. Amen. Amen. So we want to dedicate a Micaiah. Kwa hiyo tunataka tumweke wakfu Micaiah. So we want to say uh, it's not Elias. Kwa hiyo tunataka tuseme sio Elia. Elia. Yes, uh, Elia. Okay. Yeah. So it's 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 Micaiah. Ni Micaiah sasa. A wonderful prophet. Nabii wa ajabu. So as they as they bring the child. Kwa wanapomleta huyo mtoto. Jesus never baptized children. Yesu hakubatiza watoto wadogo. And that's where brother Branham got the doctrine to say. Hapo ndipo ndugu Branham alichukua fundisho la kusema. We also do not baptize children. Kwamba na sisi pia hatubatizi watoto wadogo. We hold them up and give them back to the Lord. Tunawashika mikononi na kumrudishia Bwana. And that is dedication. Na huko ndio kuweka wakfu. Amen. Amen. So bring them in. Bring them in. Bring the little ones fields of sea. Bring them. Oh, bring them. Bring the little ones to Jesus. Bring them in. Bring them. Why don't you? Mikaya. Oh my, what is his saying name? Lo jamani anasema nini? Ah, jina lake la uko. Eh, his name jina la uko. Bondara. Bondala. Bondala. He is very handsome. Ah, mzuri sana anapendeza. And uh, uh, hey. hey man, so let us bow our heads. Hebu tunamishe richwa yetu. Precious heavenly Father, Mungu wetu wa thamani. Almighty God, in my hands I hold a wrapped gift. Mungu mwenyezi, mikononi mwangu nimebeba zawadi. As the world today celebrates Christmas, wakati dunia leo inasherekea Christmas, we take advantage of this holiday. Tunatumia fursa ya likizo hii to gather as the bride to worship you. Kukusanyika kama bibi harusi kukuabudu. I hold this baby in my hands. Namshikilia mtoto huyu mikononi mwangu. A gift you have given our brother and our sister. Ambao umempatia ndugu yetu na dada yetu. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, they have done well. Bwana Yesu Kristo mpenzi ambaye umewezesha yote. To realize they cannot raise this little one. Wamefanya vizuri kutambua kwamba wapaswi ku wawezi kumlea mtoto huyu. But uh, they need your help. Lakini wanahitaji msaada wako. So in dedication we take little Mekaya. Kwa hivyo katika kuweka wakfu tunamkabidhi Mikaya from their hands and put it in the hands of Jesus. Kutoka mikononi mwao na kumweka mikononi mwa Yesu Kristo. They are the safest hands we know of. Tunajua hiyo ndio mikono salama tunayoifahamu. Protect him Lord from sickness. 
Mlinde baba kutoka kukushe na magonjwa. Protect him from a mischief. Mlinde na ubaya wote. Protect him from the things that are thrown out there in the in the world. Mlinde na mambo yote ambayo yanaweza kutupiwa kutoka ulimwenguni. If your coming tarries, kama wakati wako utakawia kuja, may he grow to be a good boy. Yalia akuwe awe kijana mzuri. Maybe a minister in the house of God. Wenda awe muhudumu nyumbani mwa Bwana. Maybe a deacon, maybe a song leader. Abda Shemasi, ama kiongozi wa sisi. Something of biblical proportion. Kitu fulani ambacho kinatokana na Biblia. May he be a blessing to his parents. Yalia awe baraka kwa wazazi wake. I pray you give the parents the wisdom. Naomba kwamba utawapa wazazi hekima the know how to raise this boy wajue namna gani ya kumlea mtoto huyu in the fear and admonition of god katika hofu ya mungu give them the resources yalia wapate vya kuweza kumtunza navyo the, the finances the food fedha chakula the clothing huo that this child may grow father kwamba mtoto huyu aweze kukua baba go to the right kind of school aende shule iliyo sahihi may they not lack anything Hebu jalia wasia ruhusu chochote but like Amram and Yoshebet lakini kama Amram na Yoshebet good guidance to this boy jinsi hebu amlee mtoto huyo vizuri we pray as we take this child na tunaomba tunapomchukua mtoto huyu put him in the hands of Jesus na kumweka mikononi mwa Yesu Kristo amen and amen amina na amina amen God bless you praise the lord god bless you mungu awabariki Oh my. Lord jaman. Yeah. I believe that uh, that boy is blessed. Naamini kijana huyu mdogo amebarikiwa. I traveled over 3000 kilometers. Nimesafiri karibu kilomita 3000 to come and dedicate him. Kuja kumweka wakfu. Hey. <laughs> Uh, we want to appreciate the pastors. Tatu kuwashukuru wachungaji wote. Pastor Msuya. Mchungaji Msuya. Our elder here from Life Tabernacle. Mzee wetu hapa kutoka Maskani ya Uzima. The ministers. Wahudumu wote huko. We really appreciate you. Kwa kweli tunawathamini wote. We appreciate the local elders. Nathamini wazee wengine wa kanisa. The helps and the governments. Wanaosaidia wote ofisi zote. Uh, for these meetings kwa ajili ya mkutano huu for standing with the pastors kuweza kusimama na wachungaji to make the meetings a success kufanya mkutano ifanikiwe we want to appreciate uh, mama mchungaji eh kuthamini mama mchungaji mchungaji yeah mama mchungaji mama mchungaji, mama mchungaji. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she has been kind to me amekuwa mwema sana kwangu she is cooking very nice food for me pika chakula kizuri sana kwa ajili yangu i've eaten senene for the first time nimekula senene kwa mara ya kwanza Uh, I've eaten cooked banana. Nimekula ndizi zilizopikwa kwa mara ya kwanza. Alikuwa anakula mbivu. And a lot of other things. Na vitu vingine. We thank God for that. Tunamshukuru Mungu kwa ajili ya hilo. you know the ministry of hospitality. Unajua huduma ya kutunzwa au karimu. It is the ministry that made Elohim to reveal the secret to Abraham. Ndio huduma iliyomfanya Elohim atoe siri kwa Abraham. He could not speak until he was full. Hakunena chochote mpaka aliposhiba kwanza. Amen. Amen. And I'm I'm going to speak I'm full. I'm Na mimi sasa nitanena kwa sababu nimeshiba. Nimelishwa vizuri. And uh, I, I want to tell you Na so far you have been a wonderful church. Yani hadi sasa nyie ni kanisa la kipekee. Uh, sometimes you travel. Wakati mwingine unasafiri. And after the first service. Na baada ya ibada ya kwanza tu you wish like going back home. Unatamani urudi nyumbani. But I don't feel yet like going back home. Na sasa mpaka sasa hivi sijazisikia kurudi nyumbani. I I feel very good. Najisikia vizuri sana. 
You love the words. Mnapenda neno. I love the words. Na mimi napenda neno. We love one another. Wote tunapendana moja kwa mwingine. So um kwa hiyo basi I believe God has got something. Naamini Mungu ana kitu fulani. Wonderful for us today. Cha kipekee kwa ajili yetu leo. Being a Sunday ikiwa ni jumapili maybe let's stand up on our feet hebu tusimame kwenye miguu yetu you know i love the people that love brother branham unajua napenda watu wanaompenda ndugu branham if, if you love brother branham you are my friend kama unampenda ndugu branham wewe rafiki yangu If you don't love brother Branham, Kama mpendi ndugu Branham, we have problems. Hapo tutakuwa na matatizo na wewe. Amen. Amen. It is the prophet that made us to to meet. Ni nabii ndiye ametufanya tukutane hivi. I I always give credit to the message of the hour. Daima mimi napenda sana kuheshimu ujumbe wa saa. If if it was not because of the message. Kama isinge ilikuwa ni ujumbe, I don't think I would have ever worn a suit. Nisingi na, na sidhani kama ningeweza kuvaa suti. I, I am what I am because of the message. Mimi now. niko kile nilicho kwa sababu ya ujumbe wa saa. Amen. Amen. Let's let's open Exodus. Hebu tufungue kutoka Exodus chapter kutoka sura ya Let's start with 13. Kutoka so 13. Mtakuwa nachukua sehemu hapa sehemu pale. Mm. Uh, so it says verses 19 kutoka 13 mstari wa 19 inasema and, and Moses took the bonds of Joseph with him for he had straightly sworn to the children of Israel saying God will surely visit you and he shall carry up uh, the, my bones away hands with you mstari wa 19 Musa akaichukua ile mifupa ya Yusufu pamoja naye maana alikuwa amewaapisha sana wana wa Israeli akisema Mungu hana budi atawajilia nini nanyi mtaichukua mifupa yangu kutoka hapa pamoja nanyi and they took their journey from Sekoth and then camped in Etham in the edge of the wilderness nao wakasafiri kutoka Sukoth wakapiga kambi Etham kwenye mpaka wa ile jangwa and he took not away the pillar of fire uh, the, the, the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people bwana naye akawatangulia mchana ndani ya wingu mfano wa nguzo ili awaongoze njia na usiku ndani ya moto mfano wa nguzo ili kuwapa nuru wapate kusafiri mchana na usiku ile nguzo ya wingu haikuondoka mchana wala ile nguzo ya moto haikuondoka usiku mbele ya hao watu mm. now let's go to verses 13 or 14 the, of, of, of chapter, chapter 14 e, twende kwenye msari wa 18 wa sura ya 14 says and moses said unto the people verse 18 verse 13 1 13 yeah okay Mstari wa 14 mstari wa 13 wa sura ya 14 Fear not Musa akawaambia watu stand still Msiogope simameni tu and see the salvation of the Lord Mkaone wokovu wa Bwana which he will show you today atakao wafanyia leo for the Egyptians whom you have seen today kwa maana hao wa Misri mliowaona leo you shall see them no more forever hamtawaona tena milele the lord shall fight for you bwana atawapigania ninyi and you shall hold your peace nanyi mtanyamaza kimya and the lord said unto moses bwana akamwambia musa wherefore criest thou unto me mbona unanilia mimi speak unto the children of israel nena na wana wa israeli that they go forward waendelee mbele on verse 21 stari wa 21 and moses stretched out his hand over the sea musa kanyosha mkono wake juu ya bahari and the lord cursed the sea bwana kaifanya bahari and uh, it says and the lord cursed the sea to go back by a strong east wind that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided 
Bwana akaifanya bahari irudi nyuma kwa upepo wa nguvu utokao mashariki usiku kucha akaifanya bahari kuwa nchi kavu maji yakagawanyika And the children of Israel went in the midst of the sea upon the dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left Wana wa Israeli wakaenda ndani kati ya bahari katika nchi kavu nayo maji yalikuwa ukuta kwao mkono wa kuume na mkono wa kushoto and the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea even all Pharaoh's horses his chariots and his horsemen na wale wa Misri wakawafuatia wakaingia ndani katika wakaingia ndani kati ya bahari farasi zote za farao na magari yake na wapanda farasi wake and it came to pass that in the morning we watch Uh, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. Ikawa katika zamu ya alfajiri, Bwana kalichungulia jeshi la Wamisri katika ile nguzo ya moto na ya wingu, akalifadhaisha jeshi la Misri and took off their chariot wheels and and drove them heavily so that the Egyptians said Let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. Akayaondoa magurudumu ya magari yao hata yakaenda kwa uzito na Wamisri wakasema na tukimbie mbele ya Israeli kwa kuwa Bwana anawapigania kinyume cha Wamisri. Let us bow our heads. Tunaamishe vichwa vyetu. Father we thank you for we've read what we believe to be your scripture. Baba tunakushukuru kwa sababu tumesoma kile tunachoamini kwamba ni maandiko yako. We pray that you may anoint it now that it may be spirit filled spoken words. Tunaomba kwamba utalipaka mafuta sasa ili liwe neno lilo nenwa. Hide me in the shadow of the cross. Nifiche katika kivuli cha msalaba. Make me narrow in the wisdom of men. Nijalie niwe mwembamba sana katika kwa habari ya maarifa ya kibinadamu. And Christ and Christ alone be the one that is projected. Na Kristo na Kristo peke yake ndiye ainuliwe. I ask in Jesus Christ name. Naomba katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Amen. 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 You may say don't close your Bibles. Naweza kukaa msifunike Biblia zenu. Mm so that we don't get tired. Ili so verses 29. God has opened the Red Sea. Mungu amefungua bahari ya Shamu. Now that the Red Sea is opened. Sasa kwa sababu bahari ya Shamu imefunguliwa. The God had removed the wheels now. Mungu alikuwa ameng'oa magurudumu of the chariots of is of kutoka of kwenye yale magari ya farasi ya Wamisri. In verse 29 it says. Mstari wa 29 anasema. But the children of Israel walked upon dry ground. Wana wa Israeli walipita nchi kavu. In the midst of the sea. Katikati ya bahari. And the waters was a Wallan to them. Na maji alikuwa ukuta kwao. On their right hand and on their left. wa kushoto na wakulia. On chapter 15. Sura ya 15. Where I want us to get our subject. Ambapo nataka tuchukue somo letu hapa. Says then sang Moses. Anasema ndipo Musa akaimba. And the children of Israel this song. Pamoja na wana wa Israeli wimbo huu. Unto the Lord and speak saying wakanena kwa bwana na kusema I will sing unto the Lord nitamwimbia bwana for he has triumphed gloriously kwa maana ametukuka sana and the horse and his rider has been thrown into the sea farasi na mpanda farasi wametupwa baharini we are just reading a scripture hapa tunasoma andiko about a paradox ambalo ambalo ni kitendawili brother branham says brother branham anasema a paradox Tendawili is something incredible. Ni kitu ambacho akiwezekani but yet it's true. Lakini hata hivyo ni sahihi. God had sent Moses. Mungu alikuwa amemtuma Musa to deliver his people. Kuokoa watu wake. And when Moses went to deliver the people, na Musa alipoenda kuwakomboa watu wale, he was not representing himself. Hakuwa anajiwakilisha yeye mwenyewe. He was representing the God of heaven. Alikuwa anamwakilisha Mungu wa mbinguni. And of all the ways that they could have used na kwa njia zozote zile ambazo wangetumia God chose the direction Mungu alichagua mwelekeo of the Red Sea wa bahari ya Sham and he said you are going to pass through here na akasema mtapita hapa 
and God was determined to deliver his people. Can you say amen? It was not Moses Musa that had gone to deliver the people. It was God that had come down to deliver the people. Let us back down a little bit. The Bible says, I have heard the cries of my people and I am come down to deliver them. So who had come to deliver the people? God Mungu. Mungu Amen. is the one that had come down Mungu to deliver the people. Watu. And he came and he hid himself in na, a burning bush at the backside of the desert. Nyuma kule ya jangwa. And there was a man na na by mwen. the name of Moses Anaitua Musa who was shepherding the sheep of Jethro. kondo wa, 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 Wayesro. And he had an encounter na na with the supernatural. Kitu cha and he met with this burning bush. Na ona kwenye moto. And a voice spoke out of the bush. Sauti katoka kwenye kijiti kile. Moses, Moses. Musa, Musa. The Bible says Moses said, nasema, Musa akasema, I will now turn. Sasa nitageuka and look at the bush nikaangalie hiki kijiti kichaka why it is burning kwa nini kinawaka moto but not consumed na kiteketei it shows that the bush was burning all the time inaonyesha kwamba kilikuwa kichaka kilikuwa kinawaka muda wote but Moses only deciding to turn at this point. Lakini Musa akaona ageuke kwa wakati huo. Many times. Mara nyingi sana. God is already in our midst. Tayari Mungu anakuwa yuko katikati yetu. It takes you to be attracted. Yaani nakuhitaji wewe uvutiwe to the phenomenon that is already happening. Na tukio linaloendelea pale. Can you say amen? Unaweza kusema amen. And Moses na Musa started having conversation akaanza kuwa na mazungumzo with a pillar of fire na nguzo ya moto in the pillar of fire na nguzo ya moto said moses moses kasema musa musa take off your shoes vua viatu vyako for the ground in which you are standing sasa mahali uliposimama holy ground nipata katifu i've got a commission nina agizo i want to send you down nataka nikutume chini kule i have heard nimesikia the cry of my people kilio cha watu wangu and have come down na nimeshuka to deliver them ni wakomboe and moses say na musa akasema ah uh, 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 hearing what you are saying akaanza kugugumia ah ana na nesikia unachosema but how is this go 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 going to be possible la 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 lakini ili litaweza kanaje seeing i have a speech speech impediment okay waona kwamba mimi na matatizo ya kuongea of all the people god could have chosen lakini watu kati ya watu wote ambao Mungu aweza kuchagua he chose Moses aliamua chague huyo Musa can you say amen unaweza kusema amina you may be here this morning unaweza kuwa hapa asubuhi ya leo maybe you have a problem in your life labda una matatizo kwenye maisha yako and you feel like this problem na unafikiri shida hiyo is a hindrance ni kizuizi I am here to tell you na niko hapa kukuambia god chose you Mungu alikuchagua wewe with your problem atakutana na matatizo yako Yes Amen With your challenge ah, Mungu alikuchagua na what? matatizo hayo ulionayo na hizo changamoto ulizonazo What Moses thought was a disqualification Kila ambacho Musa alifikiri kwamba ni sifa mbaya kwake became his promotion Kilikuwa sasa ndicho kitu kinachomuinua ye aweze kufaa So so God said because you can't speak. Kwa hiyo Mungu akasema kwa sababu uwezi kunena. You are no longer going to be a prophet. Wewe sasa uwezi kuwa nabii tena. 
I want to say something. Nataka niseme kitu fulani hapa. Moses Musa was a prophet alikuwa ni nabii until the burning bush mpaka kufika kwenye kijiti kinachowaka moto from the burning bush kutoka kwenye kijiti kinachowaka moto Moses was no longer a prophet Musa hakuwa nabii tena God said Mungu alisema Aaron shall be your prophet Haruni atakuwa nabii wako. And you shall be God. Na wewe Musa utakuwa Mungu. Hey, 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 hey. It was not a prophet. It must. It was not a prophet. Haikuwa yule nabii that went to deliver the people. Aliyeenda kukomboa wale watu. But it was God. Lakini ilikuwa ni Mungu. It was Mungu. Amen. Alikuwa ni God. Who went to deliver the people? Alienda kukomboa watu. That's why God says take off your shoes. Ndio maana Mungu anamwambia vua viatu vyako. Why was God saying take off your shoes? Kwa nini Mungu alikuwa anasema vua viatu? Because God Kwa sababu Mungu wanted to wear the shoes. Alitaka avae viatu. Ah. Ah. Am I preaching to eagles? Hivi nawahubiria watu fulani hapa. Can you say amen? Naweza kusema amina. God wanted to wear the shoes. Mungu alitaka avae viatu. Yes sir. Ndio. Okay. Basi sasa. So so Moses said. Sasa Musa akasema. If if I go there, sasa nikienda kule, the people are going to ask me. Watu wataniuliza mimi. To say who has sent you? Wakiuniuliza wataniuliza kwamba nani kakutuma sasa. And God said. Na Mungu akasema, I am mimi that i am mimi ni niko ambaye niko but lakini when you get there ukifika kule you should tell them that i am waambie he has sent me kwamba niko okay. amenituma let's put a pause let's put a Ebu pause tusimame kwanza let's put a pause hapa. tusimamie kwanza hapa god is saying mungu anasema ah, okay okay i am mimi ndiye that i am mimi ndiye ambaye ndiye So there are two I am that Sasa I am. Sasa kuna ndiye mbili hapo. Is that right? Mnaelewa hiyo. I am that mimi, I am. Mimi ndiye ambaye ndiye. He says but when you get to Egypt. Lakini ukifika Misri, just tell them that I am has sent me. Uambie tu kwamba mimi ndiye amenituma. The other I am where was it? Sasa ile ndiye ya pili mbona haikusemwa hapo? Be, 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 because to Moses. Kwa sababu kwa Musa. He said I am that I am. Kwa Musa aliambiwa waambie mimi ndiye ambaye ndiye. But there don't tell them about this one. Lakini ukifika kule siwaambie kuhusu ndiye huyu mwingine. Wewe taja ndiye huyu mwingine. So when Moses was kwa now in Egypt, Musa alipokuwa kule Misri. The other I am yule ndiye mwingine was in Moses. Alikuwa ndani ya Musa. That's why Moses ndio sababu Musa could say Pharaoh Angeweza kusema farao my people go wacha watu wangu waende It was not a prophet Hakuwa nabii tena It was God Ilikuwa ni Mungu And brother Branham says Na ndugu Branham anasema In the unveiling of God Katika kufunuliwa kwa Mungu As long as, as the word was veiled Mara tu ma, ma, madam tu neno likuwa limefichwa Moses, ndani ya Musa Moses Musa was God alikuwa ni Mungu no, no, not small letter g sio kale kerufi kadogo no, no, not small letter g sio elufi ndogo capital letter g elufi kubwa ya g ya Mungu ah 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 yeah ah, ah, i'm not going to move until you say amen sitatoka kwenye hili mpaka msema amen i said moses nilisema musa was god alikuwa mungu capital letter g elufi m m kubwa m kubwa frere brana me dice si ndugu brana mwanasema as long as the word was veiled behind moses kwamba ili mradi tu neno lilikuwa limetiwa utaji ndani ya musa musa alikuwa mungu And he says and after the word was made manifest Na anasema baada ya neno kufanyika mwili Moses became Moses again After the After the word was made manifest Baada ya neno kudhihirishwa He says Moses became Moses again Musa alikuwa Musa tena And brother Branham 
Branham is a prophet of the caliber of Moses. So, so I am saying, as long as the word was veiled behind Branham, Branham was God to the people. Branham alikuwa ni Mungu kwa watu. And after the word was manifest, na baada ya neno kuzihirishwa, Branham became Branham again. Branham anarudi kuwa Branham tena. Amen. Amen. So Moses Sasa Musa he had an evening time message. Alikuwa na ujumbe wakati wa jioni. And Moses na Musa he had a morning message. Alikuwa na ujumbe wa asubuhi. He had the pillar of fire by night. Alikuwa na nguzo ya moto usiku and the cloud by day. Na nguzo ya uingu mchana. So the pillar of fire kwa hiyo nguzo ya moto represents the evening time. Inawakilisha wakati wa jioni. Did you hear that? Mnasikia hiyo? So brother Branham starts off. Kwa hiyo ndugu Branham anaanza as an evening time messenger. Kama mjumbe wa wakati wa jioni. But there's a change of ministry. Sasa kuna badiliko la huduma. When there's a midnight cry. Kuna wakati unapokuja kilio cha usiku wa manane. He was also the one that brings. Kwa sababu yeye alikuwa ndiye anayeleta the midnight cry. Kile kilio cha usiku wa manane. To say behold the bridegroom cometh. Kusema angalieni jamani bwana harusi yuaja. And he, eh, and he was also the one na yeye alikuwa ndiye that brings the morning message analeta ujumbe wa asubuhi to say shalom kusema shalom is the rising of the sun ni kushomoza kwa jua and in shalom na kwa shalom there is now the cloud kuna wingu sasa when you hear about the cloud unaposikia habari za wingu you know that it's now morning time unajua sasa ni wakati wa asubuhi it's now another day ni siku nyingine the pillar of fire by night nguzo ya moto usiku and the cloud by day na wingu mchana the lord your god bwana mungu wako will raise up a prophet aliyemuinua nabii like and unto moses kama musa the first type mfano wa kwanza was jesus ilikuwa ni yesu but the actual type lakini as, yani ile mfano ule hasilia kabisa wa, was brother branham ilikuwa ni ndugu branham brother branham says branham anasema the old testament agano la kale and the new testament na agano jipya both of them zote mbili were a shadow of the ilikuwa ni vivuli vya leo <laughs> if you just realize how powerful that statement is kama ungetambua hiyo kauli ina uzito gani to say jesus was still a shadow kusema yesu mwenyewe alikuwa bado ni kivuli brother branham says jesus ndugu branham anasema yesu was a substitute alikuwa ni kibadala in other words he was not the actual thing maana yake hakuwa kitu chenyewe so, so when jesus died kwa yesu alipokufa he was not supposed to be the one that died hakupaswa awe mtu aliyetakiwa afe it was you and me itakiwa ufe wewe na mimi so, so we, we are the actual thing sasa si ndio kitu halisi so, a substitute is not the actual thing kitu kibadala sio kitu halisi so a, sub, a substitute is something that is standing in the position kibadala ni kile ambacho kinasimama kwenye nafasi ya mtu mwingine so, so he substituted your death sasa yeye alikuwa kibadala cha siku yako he substituted your resurrection alikuwa kibadala cha kufufuka kwako he substituted your, your indictment alikuwa kibadala cha kushtakiwa kwako so you don't have to go to hell because he has already he has already gone to hell on your behalf wewe wewe kwenda tena kuzimu kwa sababu alishaenda kuzimu kwa niaba yako hallelujah amen that was the shadow hiyo ilikuwa ni kivuli but here is the substance sasa hapa kuna kitu chenyewe The shadow kivuli announces the coming of the reality. Kivuli kinatangaza hey, ujio hey, wa kitu hey, halisi. The shadow kivuli announces the coming of the reality. Kinatangaza kuja kwa kitu halisi. So if the shadow is of an end. Kwa hiyo kama kivuli kiko and you see five fingers kama kivuli kiko hapo naona kivuli cha vidole vitano. Comes with six fingers. Alafu ki, kitu halisi kinakuja na vidole sita. It's not possible. Haiwezekani. Are you hearing me? Mnasikia hiyo? Yes. Ndio. Because the shadow. Kwa sababu kivuli. If you have a shadow and you are coming closer. 
kama una kivuli kama hiki ni kivuli and this is the end na huo mkono halisi as i come closer ninaposogeza mkono karibu and i put my hand on the shadow nikiweka mkono wangu kwenye kivuli the shadow disappears kivuli kinatoweka in other words the shadow kwa maneno mengine kivuli is swallowed in the substance reality kivuli kinamezwa katika kile kilicho halisia Hallelujah. Amen. So if the shadow is the shadow of a lion, kama kivuli ni kivuli cha simba, you better start running. Bora uanze kukimbia. Because what's coming? Kwa sababu ama anakusogea. Is a real lion. Kinachokuja alisia ni simba. Ah, ah, ah. So so if the shadow was Kwayo, healing, kama kwenye kivuli kulikuwa na uponyaji. Are you hearing me? Nanisikia. If Jesus was a shadow, kama Yesu alikuwa ni kivuli. The disciples were a shadow. Vi, mitume walikuwa ni vivuli. The prophets were a shadow. Manabii walikuwa ni vivuli. And they were healing and performing miracles. Na wanaponya na wafanya miujiza. Watch out when the reality comes. Vipi kila ambacho ndio kyenyewe kikija. It will be not just healing. Haitakuwa uponyaji tu. It will be creating. Itakuwa kuumba. Things that are not there. Vitu ambavyo havipo. So God says. This so God says. Kwa hiyo Mungu akasema. Now we are going to go. Sasa tunaenda tunaenda we are going to leave our Egypt. Tutaacha Misri. He says the pillar of fire Asema, ya moto shall be with you all the time. Itakuwa pamoja nanyi kwa wakati wote. And the pillar of cloud shall be with you all the time. Na nguzo ya wingu pia itakuwa pamoja nanyi muda wote. And as they got to the Red Sea. Kwa hiyo walipoingia bahari ya Sham there was trouble. Kukawa na matatizo. There was a mountain on the right. Kulikuwa na mlima upande huu. There was a mountain on the left. Kulikuwa na mlima upande wa kushoto. And there was the Red Sea in front. Na kuna bahari ya Sham mbele. And there were the Egyptians behind them. Na nyuma kuna Wamisri wanakuja. Are you hearing? Me? Nasikia hii. And the Bible said and Moses started speaking to the people. Na Biblia inasema Musa akaanza kunena na watu. And he said fear not. Akamwambia msiogope. Stand still. Simameni kimya. See the salvation of God. Taona utukufu uokovu wa Bwana. Which he will show you today. Ambao ataonyesheni leo. That's what I'm saying also. Ndicho ninachosema hata mimi hapo. Fear not. Usiogope. Stand still. Tulia kimya. See the salvation of God. Taona uokovu wa Bwana. Which he will show you today. Ambao atakuonyesha leo. Not tomorrow. Sio kesho. Not the next service. Sio ibada itakayofuata. Today, today. Leo na leo. Now, now. now. Sasa hivi. For the Egyptians whom you see. Kwa sababu wa misi yao mnaoaona. You shall see them no more. Hamtaona tena. The cancer that you see. The, the cancer. Kansa hiyo nayo iona. You shall see it no more. Hutaiona tena. The trouble. Tatizo. You shall see it no more. Hutaiona tena. The sickness. Ugonjwa. You shall see it no more. Hutaiona tena. You don't need a prayer line. Uhitaji mstari wa maombi. What you need is the word. Unachohitaji ni neno. I send my word. Natuma neno langu. To heal your diseases. Kuponya ugonjwa wako. Can you say amen? Naweza kusema amina. I believe. Ninaamini. In this atmosphere. Kwenye hali kama hii. God can dissolve tumors. Mungu anaweza kuyeyusha uvimbe wa aina yoyote. I believe. Naamini. God can cleanse your blood. Mungu anaweza kusafisha damu yako. From HIV positive. Kutoka kwenye HIV to HIV negative. Kutoka ukimwi kukwenya kwenye uponyaji. God is able. Mungu anaweza. You believe it? Amen. Hey. What I'm preaching about. Na unachohubiri. I believe it. Nina kiamini. And I have experience. Na nimekiona kinafanya kazi. If you want a job kama unataka kazi you do not get a job in the interview upati kazi kwenye upati kazi kwenye usahili wako you get a job here church unapata kazi kazini right now kanisani kanisani if you can believe it kama unapata if you can believe it kama unaweza kuliamini you can receive unaweza kulipokea in the name of jesus katika jina la yesu i give it to you ninakupatia hiyo i give it to you nakupatia yes sir ndio Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
The Lord shall fight for you. Mungu atakupigania. And you shall hold your peace. Na utanyamaza kimya. Sister don't fight. Dada usipigane vita. Brother don't fight. Ndugu usipigane. Stand still. Tulia. Don't be involved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have not yet started preaching. Bado sijaanza kuhubiri. Because I have not announced my title. Kwa sababu hata kichwa changu sijakitaka. I'll tell you my title. Nitawaambia kichwa changu. And we preach short. Na ni kifupi. And we we'll close. Na tutafunga. We are just setting the tone. Tunatengeneza tu. For what we want to preach. Tunatengeneza sauti ya kuiangazia. So and still. Kwa hiyo nasema tulia. And see the salvation of God. Uone wokovu wa Bwana. Today, Leo. Not tomorrow. Sio kesho. Today, Leo. Aujourd'hui, today. Leo. Hey, Lore, ndio. The devil is on the run. Shetani anakimbia. Satan is on the run. Shetani anakimbia. Hey, until when? Mpaka ulini should you suffer? Utatezeka hiyo. Until when? Utatezeka mpaka lini? Should you have sleepless nights? Utakosa usingizi mpaka lini? Until when? Mpaka lini? Should you be under depression? Utakuwa kwenye Today is your ma- day. Msongo wa mawazo. We are changing your life. Leo tunakubadilisha leo. I don't care. Sijali about the economy of Tanzania. Sijali uchumi wa Tanzania huko I don't care about that. Sijali hayo. I don't come from Tanzania. Mimi sitoki Tanzania. You don't come from Tanzania. Hautoki Tanzania wewe. I don't wewe. come from South Africa. Mimi natoka sasa. I come from God. Sitoki Afrika Kusini toka kwa Mungu. Na nitarudi kwa Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are coming Tunakuja from a different civilization kutoka kwenye ustaarabu wa tofauti in our civilization kwenye ustaarabu wetu we don't use shillings hatutumii sindano we use faith ah hatutumii shilingi au pesa hela za karatasi we use faith tunaitumia imani faith is our purchasing power imani ndiyo hela yetu Can you say amen? Naweza kusema amen. I see your job coming. Naona kazi yako inakuja. I see your wedding coming. Naona harusi yako inakuja. Can you say amen? Unaweza kusema amen. Oh, mimi. glory to God. Utukufu kwa Bwana. Hey, kwa. hey, hey. You are free. Uko huru. You are free. Uko huru. He that the son of man. Yesu mwana wa Mungu. He set free. Ali, alifungua. He is free indeed. Yesu anachokiweka huru kinakuwa huru kabisa. Sit, sit, sit a little, sit a little. Na hebu kaeni kidogo sit a little. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So Moses encourages the people. Wa Musa akawatia moyo watu. And after he encourages them. Baada kuwatia moyo. The Bible says. Bila sema. And the Lord said unto Moses. Bwana akamwambia Musa. So there is some scripture that is not written. Kuna andiko ambalo alijaandika. Between 14 and 15. Kati ya e, sura 14 na 15. Because the Moses says fear not. Kwa sababu Musa anasema msiogope tulieni. Utaona wokovu wa Mungu. The Lord will fight for you. Bwana atawapigania. But the next verse after that. Lakini mstari baada ya hapo. The Bible says and the Lord said unto Moses. Mungu akamwambia Musa. Wherefore Christ thou unto me. Mbona unanilia mimi sasa? So what happened between 14 and 15? Sasa nini kiitokea kati ya sura ya 15 na ya 15? So Moses comes and encourages the people. Musa anakuja anatia watu moyo. And after he encourages the people. Baada ya kuatia moyo. He goes to God is like Anaenda kwa Even me I'm also afraid. Hata mimi wewe ni muoga. I just said what I said by faith. Niliyanena liyonena kwa imani tu kule. And God says, "Hey Moses, Mungu akamwambia, "Wewe Musa, why are you crying to me? Unanilia nini wewe? Go back. Rudi. Tell the people. Waambie watu. To speak and go forward. Wanene wasonge mbele. We are no longer in the crying season. Hatuko kwenye kipindi cha kulia. We are not cry babies anymore. Sisi si watoto wa kulialia. Who complain about everything? Wanaolalamikia kila kitu. How are things things are bad. Mambo yetu mabaya. The economy is bad. Uchumi mbaya. My marriage is bad. Ndoa yangu mbaya. My my studies are bad. My studies. Masomo yangu yako ovyo sana. Everything is bad. Kila kitu kimeharibika. No 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 no. Hapana. Why cry? Kwa nini ulie? Speak and go forward. Nena usonge mbele. Are you hearing me? Unasikia? Go back home. 
Rudi nyumbani. Open the fridge. Fungua fridge. If it's empty, kama ni tupu. Speak to the fridge. Inene fridge. Speak. Nena. Say say meat. Sema nyama. You are going to be here. Utakuwa hapa. Are you hearing me? Nimesikia. Fish. Samaki. You are going to be here. Utakuwa humu. Bread. Kate. You are going to be here. Utaingia hapa. Eh, butter you are going to be here. Eh, blue bend utaingia hapa. Milk you are going to be here. Maziwa utakaa huko. Open the open the cupboards. Fungua kabati. Speak 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 pop in there. Eh, hebu nena vyombo eh. Eh, sadza. Sa, ugali. Ugali, speak U, ugali. Ugali unga. You are going to be there. Utakuwa humu. Speak sanene, speak what you want. Nena senene nena. What? Listen. That's not even a testimony. Hata huo hata sio ushuhuda. Just food. Ni vyakula tu. For you to eat. Ni vya kwa ajili yako. Not, it's not we are not supposed to be preaching about that. Yaani sipaza hata kuzungumzia. You are just speak those things there. Yeah, yeah, Ayo ni kunena nena tu. Say be there so that I can worship God. Kuweni tu huko muingie ndani ili nimwabudu Mungu vizuri. God is too great. Mungu ni mkuu sana. To hold a grudge against eating sausages. Eh, yani, hold. to hold a grudge Mungu ni mkuu sana yani ashindwe kutengeneza visoseji hivi samaki God is too great for that Mungu ni mkuu kwa hiyo yani huwezi kumlinganisha na nyama na Mungu sio mla mboga mboga Can you say amen Mnaweza kusema amina God is not a vegetarian Mungu sio watembele na mchicha the son of a, of a dog is a dog. Mungu eh, mtoto wa mbwa ni mbwa. The son of a pig is a pig. Mtoto wa nguruwe ni nguruwe. Son of a lion is a lion. Mtoto wa simba ni simba. Son of God. Mtoto wa Mungu is God. Ni Mungu. And God is not a vegetarian. Na Mungu sio akula spinach. You you you. Mungu wewe are we, supposed to be like God. Wewe unapaswa uwe kama Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Egyptians whom you see. Wale wa Misri mnayo waona. You shall see them no more. Hamtu waona tena. God is removing the wheels. Mungu akaanza kungoa magurudumu. Of the chariots of your problem. Kutoka kwenye kwenye farasi wa matatizo yako. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then Moses na Musa when he saw this great battle Alipoona hii vita kuu sana. And he saw how God had dealt with the Egyptians. Akaona jinsi Mungu anavyoshughulikia wa Misri. Moses who could not speak. Musa ambaye alikuwa hawezi kunena. He said can I have the microphone? Asema naombeni mic sasa. The Bible The Bible says Biblia inasema And Moses sang. Na Musa akasema. It's, it's even written the song of Moses. Inasema ni wimbo wa Musa. Say Please give me the mic. Zemge tafadhali leteni mic. After God is done with you, baada Mungu kushughulikia wewe. You are going to do the impossible. Utafanya asiyowezekana. Say sister Miriam. Asema dada Miriam. Take the tambourine. Chukua ile tamborini. Time to worship the Lord. Ile. Tunataka kuabudu Mungu. And he sang a song. Akaanza kuimba wimbo. He says the Lord is the strength and song. Bwana ni nguvu zangu na wimbo wangu. And he has become my salvation. Naye amekuwa wokovu wangu. He is my God. Yeye ni Mungu wangu. And I will prepare him a habitation. Naami nitamsifu. My father's my, my father's God and I will exalt him. Ni Mungu wa baba yangu nami nitamtukuza. He says the Lord is a man of war. Sema Bwana ni mtu wa vita. And the Lord is his name. Na Bwana ndilo jina lake. He says Pharaoh's chariots. Magari ya farao. And his horse has he cast into the na, sea. Na jeshi lake umetupa baharini. Hallelujah. Amen. So he is now singing about the praises. Anaanza sasa kuimba sifa of 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 what God has done. Wa yale ambayo Mungu amefanya. Verses 9 it says the enemy said I will pursue. 
Mstari wa 9 anasema adui akasema nitafuatia I, I will overtake nitapata I will divide the spoil nyara. my last shall be set aside upon them nafsi yangu itashibishwa na wao I will draw my sword nitafuta upanga wangu and I shall destroy them mkono wangu utawangamiza thou didst blow with thy wind ulivuma kwa upepo wako the sea covered them bahari ikawafunikiza they sank as lead in the wakazama kama risasi ndani ya maji this song we sing it in, in benoni huu wimbo tunaouimbaga kule kanisa on 11 he says who is like unto thee hey, bwana oh lord amongst the gods ni nani aliye kama wewe who is like unto thee ni nani aliye kama wewe glorious in holiness aliye kama uh, uh, mtukufu katika utakatifu wote fearful in praises ambaye ni mwaminifu katika sifa doing wonders fanya miujiza majabu who is like unto thee nani kama wewe today leo we sing this song tunaimba wimbo huu that was composed by a stammering man uliotungwa na mtu aliyekuwa na kigugumizi He says, anasema, it says thou in thy mercy. 13 anasema, has led forth the people which thou has redeemed. Wewe kwa rehema zako umeongoza watu uliowakomboa. Thou has guided them in thy strength kwa uweza, the holy habitation. Kwa uweza wako uliwaelekeza hata makao yako matakatifu. So here is my message now. Sa ujumbe wangu uko hapa. Why did God open the Red Sea? Kwa nini Mungu alifungua bahari ya Shamu? God opened the Red Sea. Mungu alifungua bahari ya Shamu. So that the children of Israel can cross. Kusudi wana wa Israeli wapite. But God destroyed the Egyptians. Lakini Mungu aliwaangamiza wa Misri. That was not for the children of Israel. Ambao hawakuwa sehemu ya wana wa Israel because God could have just destroyed them back there ta Mungu angeweza kuangamizia kule or God could have just made the, the red sea to close ama Mungu angeweza kufunga tu bahari ya Sham before the Egyptians pursued kabla ya mamisiri kufuata but he didn't do that lakini hakufanya hivyo he destroyed them aliwaangamiza and the bible tells us why Na, biblia inatuambia kwa nini it says anasema the people shall fear Watu wataogopa and be afraid na wa, wataogopa sorrow shall take a hold of the inhabitants of palestina eh ngoja 14 14 okay 14 kabila za watu wamesikia na watatetemeka wakaao filisti utungu umewashika it says the jukes of edom ndipo majumbe wa edom shall be amazed wakashanga the mighty men of moab watu wa kuu wa moab trembling shall take a hold of them nguvu ya kutetemeka itawapata all the inhabitants of canaan watu wote wakao kanani shall melt away wameyeyuka watayeyuka fear and dread shall be upon them hofu na uoga umewangukia by greatness of thy arm kwa uweza wa mkono wako they shall be as a stone wanakaa kimya kama jiwe till thy people pass over o lord hata watakapovuka watu wako e bwana till the people pass over hata watakapovuka watu wako which thou is purchased ulio wanunua so my message ujumbe wangu sasa is silencing the critics ni kunyamazisha wakosoaji silencing the critics kunyamazisha wakosoaji there is a part of your testimony kuna sehemu ya ushuhuda wako which is meant for for you ambayo ni kwa ajili yako wewe but there is a part of your testimony lakini kuna sehemu ya ushuhuda wako which, which has nothing to do with you ambayo haikuhusu wewe which god is doing it ambayo mungu anaifanya for the sake of those kwa ajili ya wale that are your critics ambao ni wakosoaji wako so god destroyed the egyptians kwa hivyo mungu aliwaangamiza wa misri and the bible says so that when the people hear na bila nasema kusudi watu watakaposikia waogope and be afraid na waingiwe na hofu and sorrow shall get a hold of them na huzuni itawashika 
and the mighty men of Moab shall tremble. Na watu wakuu wa Moabu watatetemeka. The Jews of Edom shall be amazed. Hao vijumbe wa Edom watashangaa. There are men in your life Kuna watu maishani wako that God wants to silence ambao Mungu anataka wanyamazishe by that testimony in your life kwa ushuhuda ulioko maishani mwako there are people that think this message is not powerful kuna watu wanafikiri ujumbe huu hauna nguvu there are people that think being a believer doesn't help anything wana watu wanafikiri kuwa muamini haisaidi chochote god is going to do something Mungu atafanya kitu fulani in your life maishani mwako so that their mouths kusudi midomo yao can be silenced forever nyamazishwe milele Hallelujah. Amen. Silencing. Kunyamazisha. The critics. Wakosoaji. There is no one. Hakuna mtu yote. That exists without a critic. Ambaye anaishi bila mkosoaji. Even this church. Hata ili kanisa. Has got critics. Lina wanao likosoa. If you are a minister. Kama we ni muhudumu. You have critics. Una wanao kukosoa. If you are a mother. Kama we ni mama. You are a critic. Una wanao kukosoa. The people from your family. Watu kutoka kwenye familia yako. They are critics. Ni wakosoaji kwako. Some, sometimes you go for ages without children. Wakati mwingine unaweza kukaa muda mrefu bila kupata mtoto. God has allowed it. Na Mungu ameruhusu jambo so hilo. So that he can silence. Kusudi aweze kunyamazisha. The mouth of critics. Hao ma- kelele za wakosoaji. I went for six years. Mimi nilikaa miaka sita. Without a child. Bila mtoto. Until one man came to me. Paka jamaa mmoja akanijia. And he said, you know what brother? Asema unajua nini ndugu? I was once given a post to become a deacon. Wakati fulani nilipewa fursa ya kuwa shemas. And I rejected it. Nikaikataa. And I said, why did you reject it? Nikamwambia, kwa nini ulikataa? He says because kwa sababu I realized that it was unscriptural. Nitambua kwamba si ya kimaandiko. For me to be a deacon without a child. Mimi kuwa shemasi bila mtoto. Because the Bible says kwa sababu Biblia inasema they must have their children. Lazima watunze watoto wao in subjection. Katika utifu. And here I am I'm a pastor. Na mimi hapa ni mchungaji. And I don't have a child. Na sina mtoto. Can you imagine? Wazia jambo hilo. What was going through my mind? Kilichopita kwenye akili zangu. God allowed it. Mungu aliruhusu hilo. And another one would come. Na mwingine akaja. Sister Dada, how many children do you have? Una watoto wangapi? When they know you don't have children. Wakati wanajua mtoto huna. When the time came. Lakini wakati ulipofika. God silenced. Mungu akanyamazisha. The of those critics. Makelele ya wakosoaji. Can you say amen? Unaweza kusema amina. You might be here. Unaweza kukaa huko hapa. Maybe you are failing to have children. Na hujapata watoto. I am here to say. Niko hapa kukwambia. There shall be no barren womb. Hakuna utasa wowote. Can you hear me at the back? Nasikia huko nyuma. There shall be no barren womb. Hapata kuwa na utasa. God is a God. Mungu ni Mungu. Of a paradox. Wa ya, ya vitendawili. Yes sir. Ndio bwana. Even the rains are confirming. Mbingu zenyewe zinanyesha mvua kuthibitisha hii. The natural. <laughs> the natural. Hayo ya asili types the spiritual ni mfano ya kiakiroho all the time kila wakati hallelujah hallelujah if it's raining outside kama inanyesha nje huko it shall rain in here inanyesha huko it shall rain in here huko glory to god hallelujah yes sir utukufu kwa bwana <laughs> brother branham do branham was preaching alikuwa anahubiri in texas huko texas in 1950 mwaka 1950 and while brother branham was preaching wakati ndugu branham anahubiri he was preaching in a colosseum alikuwa anahubiri kwenye ukumbi wa colosseum that's about 5000 5000 seater ambao ulikuwa unabeba watu 5000 now sasa many people were healed watu wengi waliponywa in those meetings kwenye ile mikutano and there was a man na kulikuwa na mtu by the name of Reverend Dr. Best alikuwa anaitwa uh, uh, Kasisi Daktari Davis Now Reverend Best the, uh, Dakti, the, Kasisi Best alikuwa anaitwa Best jina lake was a critic Yule Daktari Best alikuwa ni mkosoaji Now Reverend Best said the Best akasema there is nothing to divine healing Hakuna kitu kinaitwa uponyaji wa kiungu Can you say amen 
Mnaweza kusema amina. Mnasikia? Mnasikia? Okay, okay. Good. He is checking if you are hearing. Inajaribu kuona kama mnasikia. Yeah. Amen. So Reverend Best, Asa, Kasisi Best, said there's nothing to divine healing. Asema, Akuna kitu kama uponyaji wa I want to challenge William Branham. Nataka ni mpechangamoto huyo Branham to a debate. Ni muite kwenye mjadala. And Brother Bosworth, na ndugu Bosworth, heard about it. Akasikia kuhusu jambo hilo. And he came to Brother Branham. Akamujia ndugu Branham. He says, did you see this newspaper Semo, article? Semo, gazeti hili kichwa cha habari hapa? These people are saying there's nothing to divine healing. Ha, watu wanasema hakuna kitu kama uponyaji wa kiungu. Let's go and challenge them brother Hebu Branham. Hebu twende tukapambane nao ndugu Branham. And brother Branham says no. Ndugu Branham akasema hapana hapana. I don't like to debate. Sitaki kujadili neno. I don't like to fuss. Sitaki kuzozana. And brother Boswell said, Dubran brother Branham. Ndugu Branham akasema ndugu Branham. We will not fuss. Hatutazozana. Let's just go and, and show him. Wacha twende tukawaonyeshe. That is a bluff. Kwamba wao hawana lolote. And brother Branham said no. Kubrana akasema hapana. The following day, siku iliyofuata, there was another article. Kukatoka tena kichwa kingine cha habari. Trying to destroy brother Branham's reputation. Kujaribu kuharibu jina la ndugu Branham. Brother Branham is a liar. Ndugu Branham muongo. He is a religious racketeer. Yeye ni religious racketeer. A, a religious racketeer is a fraud. Is a fraud, yeah. Ni mtu ambaye yani ni ni muhubiri tu wa kidini ambaye anahubiri uongo tu anadanganya watu. Brother Branham is a liar. Du Branham ni uongo, ni muongo. Imagine wazia that kind of a critic. Aina hiyo ya wakosoaji. Calling Brother Branham a liar. Wanamuita ndugu Branham muongo. And Brother Boswell says Brother Branham. Ndugu Boswell akamwambia ndugu Branham, allow me to debate this man. I promise I will not fast. I promise I'm not going to fight. And Brother Branham says it's okay. You can go and talk to him. But I'm not coming there. I will remain in the hotel. So Brother Branham was staying in Rice Hotel. Alikuwa anaishi kwenye yuko kwenye hoteli inaitwa Rice. And he was staying there. Alikuwa amekaa pale. Brother Bosworth went to the Colosseum. Bosworth akaenda kwenye ukumbi. So uh, uh, Reverend Best, yule kasisi Best, hired an 8000 seater. Aka kodi ukumbi wa unaokalisha watu 88. Watu 88. Watu 88. Now Brother Branham was preaching in a 5000 seater and Branham alikuwa na ubiri kwenye ukumbi wa watu 5000 and this man hires a bigger auditorium huyu jamaa akakodi ukumbi mkubwa zaidi wa watu 8000 not for the preaching of the word sio kwa ajili ya kuhubiri neno to demonstrate how much of a critic ili kuonyesha yeye ni mkosoaji kiasi gani he is alivyo i want to i want you to know nataka ufahamu if you have critics Kama wewe ni mkosoaji, you are not the first one to be criticized. Wewe sio wa kwanza kuwa mkosoaji. Brother Branham himself, ndugu Branham mwenyewe, was criticized before. Alikuwa aliwahi kukosolewa. Can you say amen? Naweza kusema amina. And brother Best went there. Ndugu Best akaingia mle. And the debate started. Na mjadala ukaanza. And that man was saying this there is nothing to divine healing. Na yule jamaa kawa anasema hakuna kitu kama uponyaji wa kiungu. There are no scriptures there is nothing. Hakuna hata maandiko ya uponyaji wa kiungu. And brother Bosworth said, Bosworth akasema, I will show you. Nitawaonyesha 600 scriptures in the Bible. Nina maandiko 600 kwenye Biblia. 600 Maandiko mia sita. That confirms divine healing. Yanayothibitisha uponyaji wa kiungu. And I, I don't want you to show me three. Na akamwambia yule jamaa wewe sitaki unionyeshe hata matatu. I want you to just give me one. Wewe nionyeshe moja tu andiko moja. That shows that divine healing is a lie. Ambayo inaonyesha kwamba uponyaji wa kiungu ni uongo. And the Reverend Best could not produce one scripture. Na yule kasisi Best akashindwa kuonyesha hata andiko moja. To, 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 to support his argument. Kuunga mkono ubishi wake. And he kept saying bring brother Branham here. 
I want, I want that man, I want the healer. Badalaka, Bring that healer. He is the one I want to debate with. And he asked the question. He says, do you believe that the Jehovah of the Old Testament is the same as the Jesus of the New. Do you believe that the seven compound redemptive names of God apply in the New Testament? And Reverend Best was tied right there. He could not answer but while the debate was going on, if you happened to be sitting, maybe you are a supporter of Brother Bosworth. And you are sitting next to a supporter of Reverend Best. And Brother, brother, brother Bosworth says a powerful point. And you want to say amen. You could be shocked being given a, a serious clap with somebody sitting next to you. So people were fighting literally in that Colosseum. So something is said here and then you hear people in the corner there they are fighting. A debate is going on here. Showing the spirit that was in there. But while the debate was going on like that, the angel of the Lord came down in Rice Hotel. Can you say amen? The angel of the Lord came down in Rice Hotel and the angel of the Lord told Brother Branham to go. He went there with police with Sister Mida and Howard. And he sat in the balcony. Yeah. So the debate was over Sasa, mjadala ukaisha. Reverend Best was besting. Eh, yule uh, nani kasisi besti akawa ana anatamba pale. Because that's what his name means. Kwa sababu ilikuwa hiyo ndio jina lake. To best is to blow up. Yaani kuwa eh, bo, besti manake ni with, bora, mtu bora. Yaani mnalipuka kwa asili. Because he had been embarrassed by Brother Bosworth. Kwa sababu alikuwa ame and he keeps saying, bring, bring the healer. Kusema, and the one that was uh, adjudicating the debate, na yule yule mjadala, he said, the debate is over. Akasema, Jamani, mjadala, sasa umeisha. Bra Brother Bosworth, you can come and close the debate. Asa, ebu njo, ukafunge mjadala hu. So Brother Bosworth comes, Duba, and then he says, uh, God bless you, Brother Sema, Branham is uh, not a debater. Hey, Mungu wa wabariki, Ndugu Branham sio mtu wa kujadili jadili vitu. Uh, I've noticed during the service nimeangalia katika uh, ibada yote that Brother Branham, uh, don't lower it, Brother, just keep it up. Usishushe yache tu. He time. says, uh, I noticed Brother Branham just walked in. Nimeona Ndugu Branham kama aliingia umu kwenye hukumbi. He says, and he sat somewhere in the balcony. If Brother Branham wants to come and give a few remarks and close this session, he's welcome to do so. So Brother Branham stands up and Mita says, Hey, Billy, don't, don't go there. And Brother Howard was very angry. He says, Billy, sit down. Brother Branham says, like a real Irishman. With, with Irish temper. To say, sit down. And Brother Branham said, the Holy Ghost told me that I should go there. 
I don't care Sijali. whether you have got Irish temper. But when the Holy Ghost speaks, your temper should be silent. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When God has spoken, tempers are silenced. And Brother Branham started walking to the platform. And Brother Branham says, there was 400 ashes kulikuwa na wale wasaidizi kama mababu 400 that were blocking the people walikuwa nazuia watu to try and get access to brother brana wasimfikia na kumgusa brana i believe that should have been the end of the debate naamini hiyo ingekuwa ndio mwisho wa mjadala you are saying there is nothing to, to divine healing Unasema hakuna chochote kuhusu uponyaji wa kiungo. Thousands and thousands of people. Sasa kuna maelfu na maelfu ya watu. Wanapambana wamguse Brana. So that they can get their healing. Kusudi wapate uponyaji. Are you hearing me? Nasikia hiyo. And sister Mida, na dada Mida, went back home, akaenda nyumbani. And say to brother Brana. Kaambia ndugu Brana. But Billy, lakini Billy, there was no 500 ushers there. Hapakuwa na Una mababu 400 pale. I heard you saying on the pulpit. Nilikusikia wewe unasema kwamba ni barani kwamba kulikuwa na 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 mababu 400. That there was 400 ushers. Kwamba mababu 400 walikuepo kwenye ukumbi. It was just a handful of men. Ilikuwa tu ni mikono tu ya watu. That were just protecting you. Ah, kulikuwa na watu wachache tu ambao walikuwa wamekulinda. Mababu 400 walikuwa ndio. Brother Branham says so that's what you saw. Ndugu Branham akamwambia ndicho licho kiona wewe. You saw a handful of men. But the ashes were 400 So who was ushering Brother Branham? Heaven had come down. Angels were in that meeting. Glory. Utukufu. Glory. Utukufu. In this service, katika ibada hii, there is more in attendance. Kuna umaudhurio mengi zaidi ya hivi unavyoona. Than what you see with your eyes. Hayo unayoona kwa macho yako. There is more with us. Kuna zaidi walio pamoja nasi. Than what you see with your eyes. Unavyoona kwa macho hapa. Angels. Malaika. Angels. Malaika wengi. All over this building. Wamefurika kwenye huu ukumbi. Hallelujah. I can go back to South Africa. Naweza kurudi Afrika Kusini. And say there were thousands. Alafu mkasikia kulikuwa na maelfu that came to church. Walio kuja huko kanisani. And I would have not lied. Na sitakuwa nimesema wewe. Because the supernatural things. Kwa sababu mambo ya kiungo. A supernatural descent. Ni mambo ambayo yanadhihirishwa kiungo. Can you say amen? Amen. Now let me read. Sasa hebu nikusomee hapa. As I'm closing. Napo tutaka kufunga. You know, whenever I start reading, I'm closing. Unajua, kila napo taka kusoma, nataka kufunga hapa. Amen. Amen. Brother Branham says in the message, the angel of the Lord. Branham sema katika ujumbe wa malaika wa buwana. Oh, my God. Oh, jamaa. 1951-0718, paragraph 34. Well, you agree with Mark, I'm seeing a mod, yeah? Brother Branham says. Brother Branham says. Yeah. Okay, let's start from par okay, let's start 34. It says, and the people looked up about that time. Na watu juu katika muda uo, and started weeping. Wakaanza kulia. And about three or four hundred ushers na karibu, put their hands together. Karibu mabawabu, miantatu, ama miane, wakaweka mikono yao pamoja. As people pressing through. Wakati kama wa, wakati wa nipo kuwa ninapenya kwenu wakati watu wanapenya kutaka kunigusa trying to touch your clothes or something wakijaribu kugusa nguo zangu au kitu kama hicho it's pitiful ni jambo la kuhuzunisha i know uh, how i would feel if my baby or something was sick najua inavyokuwa kama mtoto wangu mdogo anaumwa and the doctors had given up na madaktari wamekata tamaa so brother Bram is, is showing the scene. Alikuwa anajaribu kuelezea tukio lilikuwaaje. So I'm going to be skipping so Sasa just Sasa niruke baadhi ya vitu kwa ajili ya mambo. And he says and I started walking to the platform. Honta akaanza kutembea kuelekea kule jukwani. He says Mr. Kepperman. Akaanza kusema bwana Kepperman. And them had took all their pictures. Na hao wote wakachukua picha zao. So here is the background. Sasa msingi uko hapa. Reverend Best. Ndu yule kasisi Best. The critic. Yule mkosoaji. He had invited Yet it, 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 it paid uh, photographers. Alikuwa ame alika 
wapiga picha wa kulipwa and these photographers are from Douglas Studios na wale wapiga picha wametoka kwenye studio ya Douglas and these these men were two men na hao jamaa walikuwa wawili it was Ted Kepperman ilikuwa ni Kepperman and Ayers Ted Kepperman na Ayers so these are the two gentlemen that were allocated to take pictures hao jamaa ndio walikuwa wamekodiwa kupigwa picha and best said take six shots sasa Best yakawaambia pigeni picha sita. And I will pay you. Na nitawalipa during that meeting. Kwenye huo mkutano. Because I want to skin the hide out of the men and put salt. Asema, and then and then hang it in my office. Nataka nimchune ngozi huyo jamaa na niende nikaninginize ngozi hiyo ofisini kwangu. Brother Branham said, can you imagine a Christian speaking like that? Dubran anasema wazia mkristo anazungumza maneno kama. So so Kepperman is one of the photographers. Asa Kepperman alikuwa ni mmoja wapo wa wapiga picha. He says and Kepperman and them had took the, all their pictures. Kepperman na wenzake wakapiga hizo picha. And when I go they don't let us take pictures in the meetings. Na unajua ninapoenda huwa siruhusi kupiga picha kwenye mikutano. Because they sell them and so forth. Kwa sababu anaziuza na vitu kama hivi. So brother Branham says in my meetings. Na bwana anasema kwenye mikutano yake uh, we don't allow people to take pictures alikuwa haruhusi watu kupiga picha because one picture of brother branham was money kwa sababu picha moja ya branham ilikuwa ni hela ya kutosha people were selling brother branham's pictures watu walikuwa nauza picha za ndugu branham and i want to tell you na nataka nikwambie if you want to take pictures kama unataka kuchukua picha you can take mine chukua ya kwangu no one is going to buy it hakuna atakayeinunua That should show you that you are not the same with brother Branham. Hiyo inaonyesha kwamba wewe wewe sio sawa na Branham. Your pictures even for free some people would delete them. Picha zako hata zikigawiwa bure baadhi ya watu watazichana. But brother Branham. Lakini za Branham. He says no pictures. Anasema usipige picha. People will sell these pictures. Watu wataziuza. Listen. Sikiliza. He says Anasema So brother Lindsay Kwa hiyo ndugu Lindsay had dropped back the people from taking pictures Alikuwa amewazuia watu kule wasipige picha So yes brother Lindsay one of brother Branham's managers Kwa mmoja wapo wa manager wa ndugu Branham Lindsay alikuwa yuko pale He sees the photographers Akaona wapiga picha He says sit down Sema kaeni chini No taking of pictures Hakuna kupiga picha hapa Here we don't take pictures Hapa tupigi picha Don't take pictures of brother Branham Picha za Branham Are you hearing me Unasikia And I walked to the platform Nikaenda ujukwani pale I said don't know one thing I heard about Mr. Best. Ah, nikasema si yu chochote kuhusu eh, bwana Best huyu. He says that's why the boys are fighting in Korea. Ndio maana nasikia watu wanapigana ngumi kule nyuma. So what brother Branham was saying, what brother Best is talking is about men's opinion. Ah, na akasema ndugu Best anachokizungumzia ni mawazo ya watu tu. He says it's just like the boys that are fighting in Korea the soldiers. Ah anasema ni kama tu vijana ambao wanapigana huko uwanjani maskari. Because one president thinks it's a right thing that's why he's doing that. Kwa sababu one president a president thinks that's the right thing. Kwa sababu rais anafikiri ndio jambo sahihi. So brother Branham is saying it's just his ideas. Kwa hiyo ndugu Branham anasema ni mawazo yake tu. On 36 he says and I say I do not claim to be a divine healer. I only claim to pray for the sick. And claim a divine gift. That I was born with ambacho ambayo nilizaliwa nayo and an angel of god who comes to me in the form of a light na malaika wa bwana ambaye ananijia mimi katika umbo la nuru uh, he says it's come to, to, to me many times it comes in the meetings asema inanijia mara nyingi sana na inakuja kwenye mikutano pia if i tell the truth well then it's the truth nikisema kweli basi ndio kweli hiyo but i said i cannot heal anyone lakini kasema siwezi kumponya mtu yoyote no more than mr best or any other man can any, or can save anybody kama ambavyo huyo bwana best na wengine hawawezi kumuokoa mtu yoyote 37 he says i said msaidi wa 37 nikasema the person can't come here mtu hawezi kuja hapa without god telling me what's on his heart bila Mungu kumwambia kilichoko moyoni mwake na kila alichosema na mambo ya maisha yake I have a question Nina swali hapo Why didn't Reverend Best come Kwa nini yule bwana Best hakuja pale You know brother Branham is saying Ndu Branham anasema You can't can say. come here without me knowing what is in your life Na bia anasema hakuna uwezi kuja mbele yangu hapa bila mimi kujua yanayoendelea maishani mwako. Why didn't best come? Kwa nini best sasa hakutokea? And say tell everybody what's in my life. 
na akamwambie kwamba hebu basi waambie yote aliyoko maisha yake alikuwa best anajua vizuri haleluya haleluya 38 he says if i said 38 nikasema okay okay naruka uh, let's let's go to 39 Eh para ya Oh I never forget it. Lo sitasahau jambo hilo. So brother Brenda is testified about the angel. Nubrana mzasa anazungumza habari za malaika. He says I never forget it. Sitasahau jambo hilo. And about that time. Na wakati huo huo heaven mbingu let loose. Iliashiria and they came there he came. Na hapo akaja coming down all over me akishuka kote kote kunizunguka shu shu everyone sit down kila mtu akakaa chini can you say amen naweza kusema amen while brother branham was on the podium wakati ndugu branham aliposimama jukwani when he spoke about the angel aliponena habari za malaika the presence of god uwepo wa mungu came down in that meeting ukashuka kwenye ule mkutano nobody needed to tell anybody to sit down hakuna mtu yote aliyewaambia watu wakae chini he says everybody sit still kila mtu akakaa hallelujah amen and the man who had taken the pictures of Mr Best na yule jamaa aliyekuwa anapiga picha za Best before he knew what he was doing kabla hajajua alichokuwa anakifanya he just ran down akanyanyuka ghafla ran forward and snapped the picture akaja akanipiga picha hallelujah hallelujah god mungu had testified alikuwa ameshuhudia and there was no more for me to do na pakuwa na chochote cha kwangu mimi kufanya stand still kaa kimya and see the salvation of utaona wokovu wa bwana god mungu 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 is going to testify atashuhudia it's not going to be you atakushuhudia wewe it's not going to be you haitakuwa wewe it's going to be god itakuwa ni mungu who shall testify atakayeshuhudia hallelujah amen mm. He says there was no more for me to do. Akasema mimi sikuwa na cha kufanya tena. I said thank you father. Nikasema asante baba. I walked off the platform. Nikatoka pale jukwani. Everybody sit still. Kila mtu akakaa kimya. They didn't know what was happening. Hawakujua kilichofanyika pale. This man. Hao watu. Mr. Kepperman. Yule Kepperman. An Orthodox Jew. Ndiye ambaye ni Muyahudi wa Kiorthodoxi. And Mr. Ayers. Na bwana Ayers. A Roman Catholic. Ambaye yeye ni Mkatoliki kabisa. He had wrote in the paper. Alikuwa ameandika kwenye magazeti. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He had wrote in the paper the day before. Alikuwa ameandika kwenye magazeti siku moja kabla. And said I was a hypnotizer. Akasema mimi na nazubaisha watu wafahamu. So the one who organized the meeting. Kwa sababu yule aliyeandaa mkutano. The critic. Alikuwa mkosoaji. The one who took the picture. Aliyepiga picha. Was a critic. Alikuwa mkosoaji. Can you say amen? Naweza kusema amina. Calling brother Branham. Akamuita akimuita ndugu Branham. Mtu ambaye anazubaisha watu kwenye upambanuzi. He says Asema uh, 41 m mm, para ya 41 Now okay let's 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 start from 40 Mr. Aya said I'm a Catholic Bwana yule bwana Aya akasema mimi mkatoliki He says I'm taught to believe in such things Nimefundishwa uh, kwamba to believe in such things nimefundishwa kuamini katika mambo haya but it can only come through the catholic church lakini anapaswa tu yawe yametokana na kanisa katoliki so he believes in divine healing but it must come through the catholic church anaamini uponyaji wa kiungu lakini uwe umepitia kanisa katoliki he says many of you catholics in there know Asema, that, that we, we have been taught that wengi wenu katika katoliki huko mnajua kwamba tumefundishwa mambo haya that it had to be the catholic church kwamba anapaswa awe kanisa katoliki tu he went where god told him god does things in mysterious ways alienda mahali ambapo aliambiwa mungu anafanya mambo katika njia isiyo za kawaida you wouldn't have thought he Us, would be born in a manger but he was usingeweza kuwaza kwamba angezaliwa kwenye holi la ngombe lakini alizaliwa huko now they went in and said let's sasa, fix the pictures sasa wakaingia kwenye chumba kile wakasema hebu ngoja tusafishe hizi picha for best kwa ajili ya bwana best and he threw them in the acid basi wakaingiza ile tindikali mle six of them picha sita and uh, 
and he shot one of them from that aka toa ya kwanza kutoka pale but he just threw it in lakini alitupa tu kule so the last one was just the seventh one kwa hiyo ya picha ya mwisho ilikuwa ya saba it's an extra one ya, ya ziada so mr kepperman went upstairs sasa bwana kepperman akaenda kule jogorofa la juu to go to bed kwenda kulala kitanda and mr best na bwana best mr ayas sitting bwana ayas akiwa amekaa pale smoking a cigarette alikuwa anavuta sigara yake so these are cigarette smoking critics sasa walikuwa hawa ni wakosoaji wavuta sigara and after after a while na he ba- went in baada ya muda kidogo akaingia ndani he took them out of the acid akachukua picha kutoka mle kwenye ile tindikali So he wants to see what's going on now. Hata tunataka kuone kilichotokea. He has been paid for these pictures. Huyu jamaa amelipwa kwa ajili ya picha. The one who paid him is sitting there. Aliyemlipa picha hiyo aliyemlipa kwa ajili ya kazi hiyo amekaa pale. First picture. Picha ya kwanza. Blank. Tup. Second picture. Picha ya pili. Blank. Hamna kitu. Third picture. Picha ya tatu. Blank. Tup. Fourth picture. Picha ya nne. Blank. Tup pia. Fifth. Picha ya sita blank. tano. Pitch, tupu. Sixth, ya sita. Blank. Nayo ni tupu. He says and he took the next one out. Ndipo akatoa iliyofuata sasa. Which one is the next one? Inayofuata ndio ipi? The seventh picture. Picha ya saba. He says and he took out the next one. Asema akatoa iliyofuata. And there the angel of the Lord. Na huyo hapo malaika wa Bwana. Was on the picture. Alikuwa kwenye picha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says he had a heart attack. Anasema alipatwa na ugonjwa alikuwa na ugonjwa wa moyo. Picture. Picture hii. When he saw the seventh picture, alipoiona picha hii. He had a heart attack. Alipoiona picha hii akapatwa na ugonjwa wa moyo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This picture. Picture hii. You can put it there. Unaweza Put the picture there brother. Iweke hayo hiyo picha. Uh, this picture. Picha hii. Caused a heart attack. Ili sababisha ugonjwa wa moyo. Who, who was the, the angel of the Lord? Malaika wa Bwana is there. Who was in the picture? Ambaye alikuwa kwenye hiyo picha. This picture. Hii picha. The first time. Mara ya kwanza. Ever when a man looked upon it. Wakat the first time when a man looked upon it mara ya kwanza binadamu alipoitazama alipatwa na ugonjwa wa moyo god mungu had testified alikuwa ameshuhudia if you are a critic kama wewe ni mkoso wangu utapatwa na ugonjwa wa moyo ah brother ndugu if you are a critic kama wewe ni mkoso wake utapatwa na ugonjwa wa moyo this is a dangerous picture hii ni picha hatari sana brother branham says ndugu branham anasema a man spoke against the picture jamaa mmoja alinena kinyume na picha hiyo the pillar of fire ya nguzo ya moto and he blasphemed the holy ghost akakufuru roho mtakatifu maybe you didn't get that I'm saying to speak against this. Kunena kinyume ya hii picha. The Bible says of all other sins. Biblia inasema katika dhambi zote you can be forgiven. Unaweza ukasamehewa. But to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Lakini kukufuru Roho Mtakatifu. There is no forgiveness. Hakuna msamaha. And Father Branham says. Dubranham anasema. A man spoke against this picture. Jamaa mmoja alinena kinyume cha picha hii. Akavuka mstari wa rehema. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you fine brother John? Are you fine? Okay. Still fine. Okay, yeah. good. He says, "Sawa, akasema, they, tr- they tried to get him to rise hotel." Wakajaribu ku ah. okay. to get him to rise hotel. Wakajaribu kumpeleka kwe kumpeleka kule kwenye hotel alikokuwa Brana. Why did they to bring him to rise hotel? Kwa nini walimpeleka kwenye hotel alikokuwa nabii isn't you don't believe in divine healing sasa simsemi mlisema muamini uponyaji wa kiumbe mpelekeni hospitali listen 
Eskia. And the guards didn't allow them to get in. Remember there was policemen there. Kumbuka kulikuwa na polisi hotelini pale. You are not getting in? Eh? Wakamwambia huwezi kuingia hapa. Brother Branham is resting. Brana ndugu Branham amepumzika. And then quickly referred it. Na ghafla quickly referred it. Akarejelea hiyo. And down there and sent it away. Na chini kula kaituma at 11 o'clock that night. Sa last at night saa tano ya usiku eh, to washington dc wakaipeleka kwenye kwa wakaipeleka washington mji wa washington kule your friend has just had a heart attack jamaa enu amepatwa tu na ugonjwa wa moyo you are not even worried whether he's going to survive that heart attack or not sasa hamna hata wasiwasi kama ataponywa na, na ugonjwa wa moyo au la 11 o'clock saa tano ya usiku you say i can't sleep in the same room with this picture kasema mimi siwezi kulala chumbani nikiwa na picha hii i must send it to washington akaipeleka jiji la washington dc Marekani huko. And in Washington DC. Na huko Washington DC. He says in Houston, uh, it was sent back to Houston. Ikapelekwa tena huko Houston. And it was uh, given into the hands of George J. Lacey. Na ikakabidhiwa mikononi mwa George J. Lacey. The best examiner in the United States. Ambaye ni ndio mkaguzi aliye bora kuliko hey, wote hey, Marekani. Hey, let's let's pause here. Let's hey, pause. Ngoja tusim, tusimamie hapa. This was not given to some guy who is fixing cars under a tree. Huyu hiyo picha hakupewa jamaa fundi magari, fundi makanika. Best examiner. Lakini yule mkaguzi mchunguzi aliye bora in the United States kule nchini Marekani ex FBI ambaye alikuwa yuko kwenye kitengo cha FBI are you hearing me Amen. and he kept it na akaifadhi he was a hard boiled man alikuwa ni jamaa ama hard boiled hard boiled is like a hard headed man alikuwa ni jamaa ambaye ni mgumu sana and he was working in the shell building na alikuwa anafanya kwenye e, jengo hilo which is a building that works with a questionable uh, which examines questionable documents ambalo ni kitengo kinachohusika na kukagua ni haraka ambazo zina utata he just came from california on a half a million dollar case alikuwa ndio ametoka huko california kutoka kwenye kesi ambayo ilikuwa half dollar half a million dollar case Ka, kesi ambayo iligarimu mm. dola nusu milioni ambayo ni so this is not a cheap brother sasa huyo jamaa sio jamaa mraisi rais this is a man who's coming from a half a million dollar case huyo jamaa anatoka kwenye kesi iliyogarimu nusu milioni so dola it, it's not somebody who is broke kwa sio mtu ambaye ni, ni na mecha ananja who is just going to say ah ambaye ataangalia picha na no. kusema ah hii no 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 hapana no. best examen jamaa ambaye ni mkaguzi bora kuliko wote fbi ambaye ni mtu wa kitengo cha fbi in shell building ambaye yuko kwenye jengo maalum has just made half a million na ametoka kwenye kesi ya nusu milioni dola and he looked at the picture alipoitazama ile picha and he said i will work on this asema nitaifanyia kazi he says kasema he kept the picture for two days akakifadhi picha kwa siku mbili and he sent word and said na akasema vema we will give the reading on it tutawapatia majibu kuhusu and hiyo. let you know about it on 2 o'clock na tutawajulisha habari zake saa 8 ya mchana on the following afternoon on the third day sasa kwenye siku ya tatu mchana on the third day kwenye siku ya tatu mchana I will announce about the picture. Nitatoa tangazo kuhusu hiyo picha. I will announce at 2 o'clock. Na nitaitangaza saa 8 mchana. And brother Branham says. Ndugu Branham anasema. In 1963. Mwaka 1963. In the 7th month of July. Katika mwezi wa saba Preaching Christ is the mystery of God. Wakati anahubiri Kristo ni siri ya Mungu iliyofunuliwa. He says it's 2 o'clock. Anasema ni saa 8 mchana. The end of the second pool. Huu mwisho wa mwisho wa mvuto wa pili the third is at hand. mvuto wa tatu huu hapa umeanza i believe this man naamini kwanza kwamba mtu huyu was seeing this under inspiration alikuwa ananena mambo hayo kwa uvuvio yet he didn't know that yet he didn't know lakini yeye hakujua amen amen god does that mungu ana hiyo pia 
Yes, eh? Amen. He says men of the people gathered around. Sema watu wengi wakakusanyika siku hiyo. The writers, the colliers, the times, these are newspapers. Waka wa, waandishi wa habari wa magazeti mbalimbali. And he came out. Wakaja. He is kind of a red-headed fellow. Najua yeye ni jamaa mmoja ana kichwa fulani ready. Red-headed. Ana kichwa fulani kichwa kigumu kweli jamaa yule. Very hard broiled. Jamaa mbaya yani ni sio mtu mtata sana. He walked out sarcastic. Alitoka huko and looked at uh, I, I looked at him. Akitoka huko yani uso wake amekaza sana nikamwangalia. And looked like his face had tendered up a little bit. Na nikaona kama sura yake kidogo ime He says who is, whose name is Reverend Branham? Akasema humu kwenye jengo ni nani anaitwa kwa jina la Kasisi Branham? So here now is Reverend Best. Sasa hapo kulikuwa na Kasisi Best. Mkoso waje. Mr. Ayers. Yule mpiga picha Ayers. Critic. Mkoso waje. Mr. Kepperman. Bwana Kepperman. Critic. Mkoso waje. Colliers. Wale wa Colliers newspaper. E magazeti is a critic. Nao ni wakoso waje. Times newspaper. Gazeti la Times is a critic. Nao wakoso waje. Life newspaper. Gazeti la Life is a critic. Nao wakoso waje. Brother Branham says the picture before it goes into the hall of fame. Ndu Branham anasema kabla picha yoyote ta ina kabla ya picha yoyote go through the hall of critics. Kabla picha yoyote kwenda kwenye jumba la kumbukumbu lazima ipitishwe kwanza kwenye jumba la kukosolewa. So here stands the man he says who is Branham? Kwa akasema hapa ni nani anaitwa Branham? Brother Branham stand up. Ndu Branham akasimama. He says it's mine sir. Anasema ni mimi hapa bwana. He says stand up on your feet. Sema simama mara moja. He says I stood up. Sema nimesimama bwana. And I believe the Holy Ghost came upon that man. Naamini Roho Mtakatifu alimshukia yule jamaa. He didn't know what he was talking. Hakujua anazungumzia nini. The spirit of prophecy. Roho ya unabii came upon Mr. Ikaja juu ya Lacy. Bwana Lacy. He says, akasema, Reverend Branham. Kasisi Branham. One of these days, moja siku hizi, you are going to pass off of like like any mortal do. Utapita duniani hapa kama mwanadamu yote anayepatikana na mauti. Brother Branham says I'm aware of that sir. Ndugu Branham akasema hilo nalijua bwana. And he said but. Akasema lakini as long as there is a Christian civilization. Imira ilimradi tu kutaendelea kuepo na ustaarabu wa Wakristo. Hakuna picha shall never die. Picha yako hii haitakufa. Hallelujah. He says it's the first time. Akasema ndiyo mara ya kwanza. In the world's history. Katika historia ya ulimwengu. That a supernatural being. Kwamba kiumbe cha kimbinguni. Was ever photographed. Kiliwahi kupigwa picha. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. First time. Mara ya kwanza in the history of man katika historia ya mwanadamu photograph picha of a supernatural ya kiumbe cha kiumbinguni kupigwa and he said na akasema it was a supernatural being ilikuwa ni kiumbe cha kimbinguni that's been shot ambacho kilipigwa picha it was not brother Branham. Hakuwa ndugu Branham. That was being taken a picture. Ambaye alikuwa anapigwa picha hapa. It was a supernatural being. Ah, ilikuwa ni kiumbe cha kimbinguni ndio kinapigwa picha. Brother Branham was close. Ndugu Branham alikuwa tu yuko karibu naye. When the supernatural being was being photographed. Wakati hicho cha kimbinguni kinapigwa picha. Hey, hey, hey. If you see us with these pictures. If you if you see us with these pictures. Unapotuona tu na picha hizi. We are not being religious. Sio kwamba tu wa kidini. We know what they mean. Tunajua zinamaanisha nini. If you live long enough. Kama utaishi muda wa kutosha. Brother Branham you shall die. Wewe ndugu Branham utakufa. But as long as there is a Christian civilization. Lakini mradi tu wa Kristo ataendelea kuepo duniani. This picture will live on. Picha hii itaendelea kuishi. Brother Branham died. Ndugu Branham alikufa in 1965. Mwaka 1965. 2022. 2022. This picture. Picha hii is still alive. Bado hii hai. Can you say amen? Are you hearing me? 
Hivi mnanisikia? Are you hearing me? Mnanisikia? There is a brother Kuna ndugu in South Africa. Afrika Kusini. A pastor ni mchungaji. Was falsely accused. Alikuwa ameshtakiwa kwa uongo. And he was sent into prison. Akapelekwa akapelekwa jela. And when he went into prison, alipofungwa jela, we started giving him spoken words. Tukaanza kumpa jumbe za za nabii, ujumbe. So the saints would say spoken words. Oh, wakati tunatuma jumbe zile. And he started testifying in the prison. Akaanza kushuhudia kwenye gereza. His name was Brother Babes. Alikuwa anaitwa Brother Babes. Anaitwa Brother the babes now brother babes being in prison sasa ndug babes akiwa jela akakutana mtu at the church age book na akampa mtu kitabu cha nyakati saba za kanisa he was now called the pastor in the prison alikuwa akiwa sasa ni mchungaji kwenye gereza so the man was reading the book sasa jamaa kawa anasoma kile kitabu and then he, some of the things he was understanding some of the things he was not baadhi ya vitu vingine haelewi and then he started browsing through the book akaanza kupitia kile kitabu sasa and then he got to the back of the book akaenda sasa nyuma kitabu the old church age books kitabu vitabu vya nyakati saba za zamani had a picture of the pillar of fire ilikuwa na picha ya nguzo ya moto so he got to where the picture of the pillar of fire was akaenda mahali ile nguzo ya moto ilipo he had a back problem alikuwa na tatizo la mgongo his back was crooked mgongo wake ulikuwa umepinda when he opened that page alipofungua ule ukurasa the light on the picture Nuru kutoka kwenye hiyo picha. Started vibrating. Ikaanza kutetemeka. And he closed the book. Akafunga kitabu. And he says, "Hey, sema, hey, something is wrong with the book." Hiki kitabu kina matatizo hiki. And he went back again. Aenda kufungua. And he opened the book. Kafungua tena. And it's the light. Kaona nuru. Started moving again. Kaanza kutetemeka tena. He closed the book. Akafunga tena. He thought something was wrong with him. Sema kuna shida kwake. He took a little sleep. Akalala kidogo. He got up. Akaamka. He went to the book again. Akafungua kitabu tena. The light was moving. Nuru inatembea. He closed the book. Akafunga kitabu. He says I'm taking the book to the person Asema, who gave me. Narudisha hiki kitabu. Something is wrong with this book. Kuna kitabu kina shida hiki. He says mfundi si. Asema iki. It's moving. Kinatembea. It's moving. Kinatembea. Says what is moving? Kinatembea. Ni kitu kinatembea. Asema kile kitu kule ndani kinatembea. In the book. Kwenye kitabu. It's moving. Kinatembea. He said what thing? Sema kitu gani? They opened the book. Wakafungua. The light. Nuru ile. Left the picture. Ikatoka kwenye picha. Went to the back of the man. Ikaenda kwenye mgongo wa mtu. Threatened his back. Ikaunyosha. Went back to the book. Ikarudi. Hey, hey. That light. Hiyo nuru. That light. Nuru hiyo. Is here. Iko hapa. That pillar of fire. Hapa. He is here. Yuko hapa. He is here. Yuko hapa. He can threaten your back. Anaweza kunyosha mgongo wako. He can go home. Unaweza kwenda nyumbani. And solve your problems. Na akamaliza matatizo yako. George J. Lacey said George J. Lacey akasema. Says the mechanical eye. Akasema jicho la camera. Jicho la mekaniko la kamera. Haliwezi kupiga picha saikolojia. This message Ujumbe huu. Is not psychology. Sio saikolojia. This message Ujumbe. Is a living reality. Ni kitu halisi kinachoishi. There was a brother in our church. Kulikuwa na ndugu kanisani. There was a brother brother Jacob. Ndugu Jacob. In our church. Kanisani. He said I did, I always wondered why in our church we put this picture. Nilishangaa kwa nini kila wakati tunaweka picha hii kanisani. He said I loved the message. Nilipenda ujumbe. But I wondered why the picture of a man. Lakini kwa nawashangaa kwa nini picha ya mwanadamu siku moja in the rurals akiwa in the rural akiwa vijijini where there is no light ambapo hakuna nuru he was walking in the darkness alikuwa anatembea gizani and he saw this light akaona hiyo nuru in front of him mbele yake and he says lord asema bwana i was doubting you all this time nilikuwa nakutilia shaka muda wote now i believe you sasa nakuamini and that light na hiyo nuru came to him ikaja and it went inside of his jacket ikaingia kwenye jacket and he closed the jacket like akafunga this akafunga jacket he says while the jacket was closed akasema wakati jacket imefungwa you could see the light from the outside alikuwa anaona nuru inatokeza kwa i started walking home nikaanza kutembea kwenda nyumbani the darkness gizani but walking with the picture with Lakin the light lakini na nuru inanimulikia he says i walked kutoka kwenye and i and he thought about it akaanza kuwazia he says i want to tell people about this nataka niwaambie watu but if i tell them they are going to doubt even nikiwaambia watahamini he says lord kasema bwana stay with me baki na mimi until i get home mpaka nifike nyumbani when he arrived home Nikifo, his nyumbani. sister was there brada yake alikuwa pale he said see see kasema dada i brought the pillar of fire nimekuja na nguzo ya moto and the sister said what do you mean dada akasema nini he says look at him hii hapa and the light left his jacket nuru ikatoka 
The light left his jacket. Nuru ikatoka on jacket. And it was in the air. Ikawa hewani. And they started praising. Wakaanza kusifu. Worshiping God. Wakamwabudu. Worshiping God. Wakamwabudu Bwana. Until the light faded away. Na ile ikatoweka. I want to tell you. Nataka nikwambie. Tanzania. Tanzania. Dar es Salaam. Dar es Salaam. The pillar of fire. Guzo ya moto. Is here with us. Iko pamoja nasi hapa. The pillar of fire is in this church. Yuko kwenye kanisa hii. Is in this tabernacle. Yuko hapa maskani. Is in this meeting. Yuko kwenye mkutano huu. He is here. Yuko hapa. He is here. Yuko hapa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And brother George J. Lacy. Na ndugu George J. Lacy. Say to brother Branham. Akamwambia ndugu Branham. Here is your picture. Picha yako hii hapa. Brother Branham said. Ndugu Branham akasema. No say. Hapana bwana. It's not my picture. Hiyo picha sio ya kwangu. If ever I hear you saying. Kama nitakusikia kila wakati unasema. This picture of brother Branham. Hii ni picha picha ya ndugu Branham. You. Wewe. You. Wewe. 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 It's not the picture of brother Branham. Hii sio picha ya ndugu Branham. Brother Branham. Brother Branham rejected it. Branham mwenyewe alikataa kwamba si yake. He says it's not my picture. Anasema sio picha yangu. He says it's the picture of the supernatural. Anasema ni picha ya kiumbe cha mbinguni. Jay Lacy. Jay Lacy. He says you can make a hundred thousand. Akamwambia hapo unaweza kutengeneza hela madola hapa. Just from this negative. Kwenye hii negative peke yake. And Brother Branham says I will not have it. Na bia akasema sitakuwa nayo. Jay Lacy said you can change the money and feed the poor. Na akamwambia wewe pate tengeneza pesa ulishe maskini. Brother Bram says no. Na bia akasema hapana. He says do me a favor. Asema nifanyie jambo moja. I will not take the picture. Mimi sitachukua picha. It's not my picture. Sio picha yangu. It is his picture. Ni picha yake. But do me a favor. Lakini nisaidie kitu kimoja. Can you sign on the picture? Hebu unaweza kunitia sahihi kwenye picha hiyo. And then take it to the FBI. Na upeleke kule FBI. And take it to Washington DC. Wapeleke jiji la Washington DC. And make sure that the copyright on the picture. Mwakishe kwamba ule na eh. Hatimiliki ya hiyo picha would be so little that it can be accessed by the poor people. Iwe kwa gharama ndogo sana kiasi kwamba watu maskini waweze kupata picha hiyo. And George J. Lacy took the picture. Na George J. Lacy akachukua hiyo picha. And he wrote on the picture. Akaandika pale kwenye picha. First supernatural being. Kiumbe cha kwanza cha kimbinguni. Ever to be photographed. Kilichowahi kupigwa picha. Signed George J. Lacy. Nimesaini mimi George J. Lacy. Ex FBI. Mkaguzi wa FBI. Examiner of questionable documents. Mimi ambaye nakaguaga nyaraka zenye utata. And he writes brother Branham. Akaandika ndugu Branham. You may not live long enough. Hutaishi unaweza usiishi muda mrefu sana. You may die like an immortal. Unaweza kufariki kama mtu mwingine yote. But as long as there is a church in Kipawa. Lakini madam mtu kutakuwa na kanisa Kipawa. As long as there is a bride in Africa. Madam mtu kutakuwa na bibi harusi Africa. This pillar of fire. Hii nguzo ya moto. Shall live on. Itaendelea kuishi. I am here. Niko hapa. Because of the pillar of fire. Kwa sababu ya nguzo ya moto. The Bible says. Biblia nasema. When they go to the Red Sea wanapo walipofika bahari ya shamba nguzo ya moto moved from before them iliaenda pale kwenye bahari ilitoka mbele ikaenda it, nyuma it was the first time ilikuwa mara ya kwanza ever the pillar of fire went behind them nguzo ya moto kutoka mbele na kwenda nyuma i believe the people were complaining naamini watu walikuwa nalalamika to say we don't see the pillar of fire sasa sisi nguzo ya moto hatuioni but i've got news for you lakini na habari njema kwa you don't see the pillar of fire in front Usipo of you Yona nguzo ya moto mbele yako ujue kwamba iko inashughulikia wa Misri nyuma Hallelujah Oh glory to God He is moving now Anatembea sasa He is moving now Anatembea sasa To deal with your Egyptians Kushughulikia wa Misri wako To deal with your sickness Kujukulia kushughulikia your sickness Kushughulikia magonjwa yako To deal with your trouble Kushughulikia matatizo yako The pillar of fire Nguzo ya moto is here Iko hapa To silence the critics Kunyamazisha wakosoaji Mungu awabariki sana Mungu awabariki sana Mungu awabariki sana Mungu awabariki Mungu awabariki sana Mungu awabariki God bless you Mungu awabariki sana